Hello everybody, we are back with our multi-instance DMX fixtures in Unreal. And I have my 8 cell, not anymore, have my 8 cell fixture here. And we're going to add a light to it today. So we're going to go into Outliner. Um, if you don't have this dragged in, go ahead and drag it in. And then edit this. And the first thing you we're going to add is a rectangle light. That's the best light for doing this, I think. Um, I like to change the barn door angle so I can see which way it is pointing. And then let's get this rotated into position. Adjust the width and the height to fill your fixture entirely. We're not going to make different different rectangle lights for each cell just yet. We can incorporate that, but if we try to do that on its own, and then you add in a, even a couple of these, it's going to be far too many. Uh, rectangle lights or point lights in the, in the uh, scene to compute. So we have to handle that a different way, which I'll show you later. But this still gets the job done. I'll show you what I have planned. We're going to average all of the outputs, and that's going to be our output. So if it's all red, your light's going to be red. Uh, if it's cycling between red and yellow, your light output's going to be orange. If it's cycling between red and blue, your, out, your light output's going to be purple. Um, and so if you have some sort of effect wave going, it's going, to course, it's going to respond to that accordingly. So we're going to move this light into position. And that's all we have to do with it. And then we go to Event Graph. And we can drag off of this completed. Once this loop is done, we can move on to the next um, task that we want to do. So this is going to be to set the rectangle light output. It's going to also be in a for each loop. And we're still going to use our output colors because we're outputting the same color. And so all of this is going to go into a function but we're going to draw it out here for now. We're going to drag this rectangle light in, but it's going to be done later. On the loop body, well, let's take this into a uh, function now because we have to create a local variable to save some computing. And uh, we can't do that in this big, in the main event graph. So let's go to functions, add a new function, and call it average and then copy these control C and paste them into your average so when this fires we're going to take all of the output colors that we have and this variable will be known even though it's inside this function and we're going to add all of these up together. So here we get this new local variables. So we can add one. And it's going to be a single vector value. And we're going to call this added colors. Drag and drop that in. And we're going to say set. And then we're also going to do a get. Because we're going to add added colors to itself. And so we need this to start off at zero. Zero, zero, zero. And then this is going to iterate for this fixture eight times.
And so once we have all of these colors added, we're going to run off of this completed tab and we're going to, well, let's do this differently. Copy paste this. We're going to set this again, but it's going to be, well, I don't know if we have to set this again, really. It's going to be this color or this value divided by our cell count, which is eight. If your cell count's different, obviously. And then I don't really think we need to set this value actually. But what we do run off this completed tab is Ah, here it is. What we do need to run off of this completed tab is the output event pin. And so we can add that through here. And so once all of these are added, then we can output. Now the value that we're going to call is a vector and it's going to be these added colors divided by eight. Eight being our cell count. We don't need the rectangle light in here. So we can compile and save. Oh, and then we can name this. Averaged vector. Then go back to our event graph and we can drag this in. So the variables built in, don't need to attach any variable here. And then the average vector is what we set our rectangle light to. So we're going to drag off of this. And actually, this completed tab here can link directly to um, this node because this has the for each loop built in. And so this will fire eight times, and then on completed, the return node will fire once, which is what we want. And then rectangle light, we say set light color. And then this is a linear color, so we have to split this and then say make linear color. We have to do that because the alpha layer is going to be zero and we need it to be one. So now we can drag in the rest of our pins and then output our linear color. And that should be enough to do what we need. Now, I don't see DMX flowing through here. So let's do a little trick we found out. <clears throat> let's save everything. me to save the map. And then turn down the sun. Now, this could be correct, 
because I have a rainbow going in and it's split between eight cells. And it looks like it's doing just that. So now if I go to my lighting console and I clear out, I would hope my light would turn off. And then if I turn these all to red, the light still follows. To help demonstrate this, I set up some effects and colors to show you guys how averaging these colors uh, and intensities works together. I'm going to turn my light on and it's already rainbowing. So what I wanted to show you was that even though these colors are, are all averaged together, they still respond correctly for most scenes. So if you have a red scene here with a dimmer chase going through it, it's still going to look like it. Now note that the dimmer intensity is pulsing here because this effect is offset to 24 fixtures instead of 8. If I were to run this effect with only 8 fixtures, the light intensity would remain unchanged because the average of all 8 of these would remain the same. So if I turn these effects off, I can show you the same thing with color. So here we have red and yellow effect between 24 cells and then that same effect between 8 cells. The resulting color will always stay the same. With green and purple effects, Here we see something interesting. All of these colors are averaging, even though that isn't quite what I specified. So let me revise this effect by a bit. So you can see that here the color will change. But on an effect like this, the resulting color is actually still white because green and purple have opposite vector values. So that's it. That should get you to a functional light. So thank you for watching and tune in next time and I'll have more upgrades planned for you.